Welcome to another episode of the podcast. I'm Anna Arcana. I'm Brad Gage. And I'm Amy Bandlian. We are here with Amy, who is actually a card counter, blackjack and all amazing things. But right before we get into her episode, we want to say thank you to Squarespace for mm. sponsoring us today. You can go to squarespace.com slash Anna for 10% off of a landing page. They got drag and drop. They got really nice templates. And they're really cool and they're funny. And you can go to dreamingwithjeff.com for fun stuff. It's easy. It's super Use easy. Use them. It's easy. <laughs> So before we ask you how you got started, what exactly is card counting? Good question. Um, okay, so basically it's just, it's the simple, the simple part of card counting is just the counting. It's like for every, for every card that comes out of the deck, one through six or two through six, is you just give it an add one. And then for every card, seven, eight, nine, it's neutral, so you don't do anything. And then for any face cards, aces, kings, jacks, queens, you do minus one. Because what it does, then it gives you an average overall. If the count is really high and you've added up to a higher number, that means there's a lot more face cards in the deck. Face cards are what are going to give you your 20s and your 21s. Yeah. Which is how you win in blackjack. Specifically in blackjack. blackjack. Ah. Yeah, it's only in blackjack. There, a lot of people seem to think that I play poker, which I would be terrible at poker. I have no idea how to play. But blackjack, yeah. I can play. Card counting doesn't really work in any other no. card game? it doesn't apply because with the, the interesting thing about blackjack compared to most other, any other casino game actually, is that blackjack has a history and it has a future. And so you have your stack of cards that's on one side that they deal from, and then they, they put them on the other side that they've finished. So you know how many cards have been used and how many cards are left, depending on how many decks they're using in that particular shoe. Mm. And then, so what, by seeing what's come out already, you can predict just generally what's going to come next. You're not predicting, I think a lot of people think that you're predicting exact cards. You're not doing that. You're just getting a general idea of what the odds are of the cards that are left in play. Is this illegal? It is not illegal. A lot of people think it is illegal. Ah. A lot of people say, well, at least it's against the casino rules, so it's cheating because you're not allowed. It's not officially cheating and it's not even officially against the rules. If you called the casino and said, hey, we're going to come count cards, is that against the rules? they would say no. If you're using devices or you're like using some sort of computer, or you're doing some sort of thing where you're like trying to see the dealer's whole card, that is cheating. And that is uh, very much against the rules and illegal. But card counting is not illegal. How are they able to kick you out of the casino? So just like Walmart reserves the right to refuse service to anyone, casinos can do the same thing. Mm. And if you're, they could do it for any reason. They could do it because they think you're being obnoxious or whatever. They don't typically do that, but they could. But as a card counter, they know that you can win. So after they figure it out, which is pretty easy to do, after a little while they know, um, they just usually tap you on the shoulder. They're really nice about it. It's not like the movies. They tap you on the shoulder, they say, you know, they bring you away from the table so it doesn't, you know, alarm anybody else. But they say, your play is too good for us. Can you please stop playing blackjack? You can play anything else, but just don't, we won't take your money anymore at the blackjack tables. That's so not fair. Yeah, and, and huh. sometimes they're meaner about it if they just yeah. decide to take it personally. Like certain casinos, like the Hard Rock, for some reason, they just take everything personally and they'll like escort you off the property or like be really like, rrr about it. But Hard they're not Rock gonna, like, in Vegas or? Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. But they're not gonna like beat you up or like cut your fingers off or chase you down or whatever. Has uh, card counting ever landed you in any dangerous situations? No, not me. Um, some of the other team members have been back roomed before. They've been put in, they've been taken to a back room and some of their stuff confiscated for a period of time. But it was never anything like, like it was never anything actually dangerous. Like they mm -hmm. were just trying to intimidate them, which is still, they're really not allowed to do that. They're not supposed to do that. But some, you know, Indian reservation casinos mm -hmm. can kind of get away with stuff. So. Um, so they do, just to scare you. <laughs> but uh, So they've got some good stories, but it never happened to me. I think as one of the only girls on the team, I think I kind of got away with more, maybe. So yeah. how, did, how did you get started in card counting? So a good friend of ours um, started, he had graduated with a math degree and started this blackjack team with his friend because they were playing for a while, making a lot of money, but they didn't want to be in the casinos anymore. So they were like, let's be team managers, train a bunch of people to play, and then we, they, we can send them out to the casinos with our, with our bankrolled investment from outside investors. We actually, when we saw how much money he was making and that he was buying real estate, we actually started out as outside investors. We were some of the people that put money into the team because the return was ridiculous. It was like 110%. We doubled our money within the year. Wow. So we were like, okay. And as soon as we started seeing those returns coming in, we were like, this is awesome. <laughs> Let's train and, and test out and be on the team. So we trained for a month. We went up to Seattle to test out. That's where the team is based. And then when we passed, which was hard, it's a lot harder than people think, uh, when we passed, then um, they gave us $100,000 cash and went to Vegas. <laughs> wow. Did and you make your money back? Um, well, there wasn't any, like, 
money making back. Like all the money is the teams. Mm. So you, if you run out of money, you just get more money from the team, which you try not to run out of money. That's not always a good thing, but it happens. You know, there's big highs and there's big lows. That's yeah. the, it's the average that is where you make your money. Um, but yeah, you play with the, the team's money. They take on all the risk so that you don't have to do that, but they also take all the wins. We get paid by the hour actually mm. in our team setup structure. So that was my question. I mean, like you're the one who's out there doing the work. True. But uh, they're bankrolling the money you're playing with and you're getting paid hourly. Wouldn't, is it not more uh, reward just playing with your own money? Yes, there would be, but you also would have to A, come up with a big chunk of money to be able to play with, because uh -huh. your money is your tools. Mm. The more money you have, the more money you can make, like anything in life. So if, if you don't have like 100 grand sitting around or like the team had $1.5 million in cash, it's a lot harder to go out and just go play. Secondarily, you're taking on all that risk by yourself. The thing about spreading it among the team, a lot of people seem to think that the team is so that you have a lot of people playing at the same time at the same casino. We never play at the same time at the same casino. It's because it's all about hours. It's all about earned value. And the more hours you can put in, the more time you put in, the more your odds are that you're filling up those, you're making that those odds come closer and closer together so that you're getting to that profit. Wow, do you still play on this team? Uh, no, I don't play anymore. When I got, when I, um, I stopped playing when I was about six months pregnant. Oh, wow. <laughs> because I that was like... That seems like a great... But they're not going to kick out a pregnant woman. I know, woman. right? That's why I kept playing. But I was like, at some point, I'm not going to be able to just be like jetting off to Vegas every weekend. So, yeah. So, I retired. And is Vegas <laughs> the only place where you did it? Or, I mean, there are no. other casinos in California? Yeah, other casinos. Um, definitely down in San Diego area, Palm Springs area. Um, some a, a lot up in Seattle just because that's where the team was based. And every quarter we had a team meeting. So, everyone had to fly into Seattle for the team meeting. But there was a lot of people based out in the Midwest that would play out up there. Um, a lot of people went out to, like, Atlantic City or Biloxi or any of those places. I didn't really go very far because Vegas was right here. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's fun. And um, and then San Diego was we, there was a lot of places to hit up down there too. So, and is there a community uh, like you had your team for sure? Are there other teams? Do you get? Is there like a conference? Like, do do people know each other? There the are, <laughs> kind of. I mean, there's a lot. There was a lot of teams. There's like the the major teams that everybody kind of knows about. There's like the MIT team, and then there's like a few other big name teams that people know about. But you don't typically know who's on. It's very, you know it's very. Everything is very kind of in disguise, incognito, because you don't really want people to know who you are, right. you know? So, so nobody really knows who they are, but if you, like if a card counter came to a table and there was another card counter there, it would be super obvious. So you would kind of know. And then if they were playing on a team, you wouldn't necessarily know right then and there unless they were doing um, team play, which is a separate thing. Um, you can do team play, which is where you have a, one is called a big player and one is called the, um, just the, the designated counter. So that person will just sit and count like from the beginning of a shoe because if you don't start counting at the beginning of the shoe and it, you explain don't what a shoe is real okay quick. so the yeah. shoe is like the stack of cards that is in the little box that they're dealing from mm -hmm. okay if they have the automatic shufflers don't even bother sitting down because there's no way of counting counting that but if they have a six deck shoe which is what i usually played some people play double deck um you have to start counting at the beginning of the shoe or you don't really have the information you need so um so the 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 low player would go in and sit down and start counting and wait until the shoe got good, got hot or good or when the count was really high. So once the count's really high, they signal the other person to come in. And so this person's just playing like low money all the time, like minimums, table minimums. So then the other person can come in and play big money right away and then just keep playing until the shoe. And then as soon as that big player gets there, the other person goes and finds another table to start counting. But um, the big player will just play big until the count goes back down again. Now, the, one of the main reasons for doing that is just to last longer before getting kicked out. Because one of the mm. biggest telling things for a card counter is that you start out playing table minimums, like two hands of $100, and then the count gets good and you jump up to two hands of $2,000. Right. Nobody does that. I mean, that's just unheard of. And then they go back down to two hands of, two, of 100, you know? Mm. So, so that's really With the obvious. new shoe, yeah. yeah that, well, or I mean, or it, just it's... when the count gets bad again, you kind of like go down as the mm. count changes throughout the shoe. So, so yeah, it's, it's something, that's one of the most obvious things. So the only reason people do team play is usually for that reason, to last longer. But then, you know, you're only making the money that the big player's making, too. So you're not, you kind of have to, you make less money individually because yeah. you have to share the amount. Have you had a circumstance where you were at a table and then you recognize that someone not on your team who you don't know is also counting cards? No, it's never happened to me. It's only been... Um, it's only been the like the thing that has happened is that other people that sitting next to me were really confused for some reason the 
pit boss assumed that the other two players sitting next to me were in on it with me for whatever reason. I have mm. no idea why because they were really dumb and they had no idea what was going on. And they kicked all three of us out. And I knew what was happening. But the other two people were like, this is ridiculous. Oh, my God. Why would they not <laughs> let us play? I just can't even. And I was just with them. I'm like, I know, right? It's crazy. <laughs> but I was like, I'm not going to tell them. But um, no, I've never I've never been into another card counter from other teams or, or just at all, really. I've only known the people in our in our community. But there's also like there's tons of forum boards and message boards because you kind of have to know what you're getting into before you go to the casino to know what the um, what the odds are and how much money you can make because it all depends on it. You know, is the game hit 17 or stand 17? Where do they put the cut card? You know, what are the is it? You know, do they do they allow doubles after splits? Like all these kinds of things that can make a difference. Double. Uh, do you want to explain some of these terms too? Yes. yes. So like for people who yeah, have not played who, blackjack. Yes. And I had never played blackjack until I yeah. trained and played for the team. So you know, a lot sometimes if you get like two um, fives, for example, you can split them. Um, then after the split, are you allowed to then double depending on what you get? Like if you have two fives and then you get a six, then you'd want to double because it's an 11. So, oh yeah. Yeah. So are you allowed to do that? That would determine how much money you get paid, which is also based off of how much money you're expected to make off mm. of that game. Do you have any advice for someone who wants to be a card counter? Um, I do. The, my, our, the friends of mine that started the team, um, they no longer run the team, but they do run a website called blackjackapprenticeship.com and they have all the tools there. The first... The first set of tools like of learning about it is all free and then they have like a paid program if you want to like keep going and get better and better. It's really interesting. It's a fun thing to do. Um, a lot of people do it as a hobby. I think the thing that people don't realize is in addition to the counting of the cards, like that's the easy part of just like adding ones and zeros. So once you get that down, you have to be able to get that down so that you can do it without thinking because you have to catch every card that comes out and right. you have to factor it in immediately. So you get to that point where you can do that without thinking, practice, practice, practice. Then you still have to have all these charts memorized. You have to have every chart memorized so that in every scenario, whatever cards you have and whatever card the dealer has, there is one right answer based on what the count is at that time. Additionally, you also have to look at how many cards are left in play. So there's the, there's the shoe that they deal from, and as they're dealing, they put them into the discard tray. So when you start out, there's six decks in play. As they start dealing a few cards, then you're at five and a half decks. Then you're at five, four, three, two, et cetera. So if the count is like 10, that's a good count, but that's only your running count. That's not your true count. Your true count is when you divide by the number of decks left in play. So in addition to doing all of the counting and remembering all your charts, you also have to take that number you've counted and say, okay, 10 divided by five you know, is two, but then you have to do 10 divided by four and a half and 10 divided by three and a half. And, and that's why I never got up to the point of training, because you have to test out additionally for um, double deck. And people think double deck would be easier or single deck. It's hard to find. Not a lot of casinos offer it. But because your odds are a lot better, but then you also have to do much harder fractional division, and I just my oh, brain wow. could not handle that. Like starting to to like divide by one and three fourths and one and I just am like Bleh, ah, explosion of brains. <laughs> yeah, are, are you just sitting there like one? Oh, okay, yeah. Kind of, you know, like <laughs> one, two, and then half. Okay, like it just seems like it would be so tough to hide that much because you're doing such yeah. difficult brain work. You are, and you kind of have to play it off. Like I would just kind of, I would, especially in the beginning, I would just do everything really slowly. Like they can't move on until you do your move. So if you don't hit or stand or, you know, whatever, double, um, then they can't do anything. So I would kind of have to like pause a little bit and kind of just act like I was distracted or whatever. And yeah. then like, cause you have to get good at just doing it without being really obvious. Like yeah. some of the other guys in the team were just so good at just like, they could hold these full conversations while they were doing it. I was never that good at doing it. I'm like, I can't focus on that many things at the same time. So I would just try not to talk to anybody unless I like was already saying the count, like all the time I'd be saying the count in my head. As soon as I got the count, I'd be like three, 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 three. And I'd have this conversation while I'm saying three, 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 three in my head. And then as soon as it changed, I'd be like four, 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 four. But I find myself doing that in like regular life. I'd be like, okay, gas is 453, 453, 453, 453. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what am I doing? You know, so yeah, you start to get in this, you train yourself and then you start to do it without thinking, which is good. But my brain did, I mean, you're using so much brain power. I would literally, I'd be in Vegas and do like 12 hour shifts through the night and forget to be hungry and forget to be tired. And cause you're just, your brain is working so hard. It doesn't shut off. Are you going to go back? Um, I mean, I would do it again. Maybe if we kind of just came up with our own like hundred grand that we wanted to play with. But right. again, I mean, there still is the risk. Like there were plenty of times where, you know, we went down 50 grand and it was like, you know, that would be my money if I, you know, and I don't just have another hundred grand to go grab and, and keep playing. Cause you have to have more money in order to keep going. That's your tools. And I know a lot of people use that as kind of like a, see, it doesn't work. You're just gambling, but it really isn't. It's the casino has the edge they have, but they only have like a 1% edge. 
And you just, by card counting, you actually take that edge into your favor. So it's still on the averages. You're not making, it's like you're using a lot of money to make a little bit of money, kind of, is what mm -hmm. it is. But yeah. um, I mean, you're still making a lot overall, but you're risking a lot too, unless you have enough money to make your risk really low. And you can't, like, that's the thing, is the, the, the stakes that we were playing with the team was based on a very mathematical equation based on how much money we had as a team. So that's the real difference, is if I had a smaller bankroll, I would have to play smaller limits, which would mean I wouldn't be making as much money, which is fine, because I was making a percentage anyway of the amount for the team. But um, yeah, it's just a matter of the risk and what I'm willing to take. What's the most you've lost in a hand? Do you remember how, like, the largest like sum? Like your worst hand. Yeah. In one hand, I mean, I think, oh, yeah, I know. It was at the Venetian. There was a big crowd, and I was like, man, if I had won that one, I would have been awesome. But it was like, I think I had split tens, like, three times, because, like, once the count get that, gets that high, that it, that it warrants that you would split tens. It, it still warrants that you would split tens until the count keeps getting lower as the tens come out, you know? So it was like, I had tens, I split them, I got more tens, I split them again. So by that point, it was like 2,000, 4,000. 6,000, 8,000, 10,000. I mean, it was like at least ten, twelve thousand dollars maybe more. Wow. Um, and then I lost. <laughs> I think the I think the dealer got 21. What happened? Because I had all 20s. Yeah, the dealer must have gotten 21. And I mean, in one trip, there was one trip I went up to Tachi Palace in Northern California, and I went and I I made seventy thousand dollars. So that was pretty cool. What? Yeah. And do you like uh, casinos? No. <laughs> do you like I don't hanging really out like in casinos? casinos? Like over it? I mean, I. Well, I mean, I don't mind them. It depends on where you are. If you're going to some of these like strip mall casinos in Seattle or like some of the real like rural places, it's kind of boring and lonely and kind of sad. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people there that are just like, kind of look kind of miserable to me. Um, for me, it was fun personally. Like the, some of the environment was kind of sad, but you know, some of the really nice casinos in Vegas are super fun and there's yeah. so much else going on and it's always just like a big, exciting adventure. And for me, it also equaled everything was free. Like everywhere I went in Vegas, everything was free and we got ridiculous comps all the time and that made it that it was i mean i would do it again just for that i mean what kind of comps like it, th these comps are, are coming because you're spending so much at the casino like is there is there like a, a a card you get like how does that even work i've always wondered yes um if you are betting high amounts whether you're winning or losing they don't care because they assume in the end the house always, always wins but if you're bidding high amounts, they're immediately gonna take notice. And then they're gonna send a host and they're gonna start saying, hey, what can I get for you? Anything you want, we'll make sure we take care of it. And, and that's just the beginning. They'll, they'll give you free rooms, free food, eating at all the fancy restaurants, spa treatments as much as you want. You can even go like the Hard Rock store. I think I went out and just bought everything at the Hard Rock store for free, because um, you can use your points. But they also have the player's cards and they keep track of your play on that. And if you're playing high limits, and you're a high roller, as they like to call us, yeah. then they're, they're gonna, not only do you get all those points to spend on lots of things, um, anywhere in the casino and in their affiliates, but they start sending you mailers to get you to come back as much mm. as possible. And these mailers are where it's really at. I mean, that's where we got, like our first one, I think was a $5,000 shopping spree at the Caesars Palace Mall. And then it started becoming like $3,500 Macy's cards for me and my husband, we were both playing. $3,500 Macy's cards every month each. And we would just go what? drive there and pick them up. And then it was $1,000 Visa cards. Then it started dwindling. And then we were like, 500 bucks? Like, that's just dumb. We're not even gonna go get it. <laughs> Cause we had been so spoiled. Not to mention the unlimited food and drink and sweets and you know, everything spa treatments i mean it was ridiculous yeah. we also got a free we got a private jet trip to like to tahoe and a ski trip all covered we had private jets to vegas which is a, the only way to fly to vegas it's amazing um we had a free <laughs> trip to the bahamas i mean it was just we've had like ridiculous amounts of comps so your income was quite a bit more than you were actually making right true well i mean technically it was income in stuff but but sure. yes i mean we actually because of the time well, yeah, but because at the time our in, our only income was the blackjack, we actually turned a lot of our comps into into money because we just needed the money. So we would take these thirty five hundred dollars Macy's cards, we'd break them up into hundred dollar cards, and then we'd sell them for about eighty bucks on the on the hundred. Nice. <laughs> and that was how we made more income. I mean, I'm not gonna. We spent some ourselves too. We got a lot of Nike Town gift cards because that was one of the main stores at Caesar's Palace. And I mean, we did buy a nice like Italian leather recliner, and we did buy yeah. like a big TV, and we bought like some nice stuff. But right, yeah. but what are you gonna? I mean, after a certain point, you're like, right. what am no, I gonna use not, all this for? We don't need for? to go buy a bunch yeah. more clothes more at stuff Macy's. Macy's. Yeah. yeah. So well, I wish wow. we had more time with you. That's okay. uh, time's coming up. So we like to ask all of our guests this: if you had to summarize your entire card counting career in one word, what would it be? Adventure. It was that. I think when I look back, that's what it was. It was like a big adventure, something. I'd never done before, I'd never heard of before, a lot of people don't know much about, and it just felt like, 
it felt like I was actually living this other life, this other person's life, for this person who had a lot of money, or they thought she had a lot of money. And I mean, I would wear the wigs and the disguises sometimes, and then I'd be like <laughs> living large in Vegas, like I would never do normally, and like acting like I was spending lots of money that wasn't mine. And yeah, it was just an adventure. That is so awesome. That's awesome. Thanks like so the, much. Like the I, movies. I know. Well, better than the movies. Mm. Yeah, way better. Because it's not even illegal. I know. True. I had no idea. I was so sure it was Thanks illegal. Thanks for debunking Everybody that. thinks that. Yeah. And I, I think the movies try to make you think that, but it's not. So many interesting misconceptions mm. about card counting. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Explain Things to Me. We hope you learned a lot from Amy. I'm Anna Kana. I'm Brad Gage. And I'm Amy Van Leeuwen. Knowledge is power, and so is math. Go to Vegas. <laughs>